This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast, your go-to podcast for all things electric vehicles. My name is Francie. I am your host in today's episode, and I hope you, I catch you at a good time, whether you're on your morning or evening commute, your lunch break, whether you're washing the dishes or walking the dog. It is great to have you here. In today's episode, we are diving into the latest developments in EV manufacturing standards set by the Environmental Protection Agency and how they are reshaping the future of automotive technology. So buckle up because we're going to dive into the details of these new regulations for and what they mean for automakers, EV enthusiasts, and of course, the environment. So let's start with the headlines. When I saw them, when my friends and family and were sending these to me, it was a lot of comments on, okay, these are groundbreaking rules. The automakers aren't too upset about it. What's going on? Of course, it piqued my interest right away. So on March 20th, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency announced its final national pollution standards for passenger cars, light-duty vehicles, and medium-duty vehicles for model years 2027 through 2032 and beyond. And these standards mark a, a very significant milestone in reducing emissions of greenhouse gases, hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, and particulate matter from new vehicles that are going out onto the road in the future. And they are estimating hundreds of thousands of tons of particulate matter, nitrogen oxides, and volatile organic compounds to be removed from our air due to these new regulations. Cleaner air is definitely a goal of these final rules. According to the EPA, these regulations will avoid more than 7 billion tons of carbon emissions and provide nearly $100 billion of annual net benefits to society. This includes $13 billion in annual public health benefits and $62 billion in reduced annual fuel costs and maintenance expenses for drivers. So we've heard before that you can really save a lot on EVs because there's <laughs> many, many less moving parts. You don't need all the oil, but perhaps tile, tires and wipers. So we've had discussions about that. Um, perhaps it's easier for just one person to own an EV and replace those, but commercial fleets, maybe it's a bit more expensive to replace those tires, but that is another topic of conversation for another day. The regulation aims to gradually tighten the limits on tailpipe pollution. Of course, any of these rules that we've ever seen have been staged. They've been gradual. There are annual goals that will finally result in the final achievement of the whatever standard, whatever things must be complied with or met by that end date. So they have a goal of having EVs and hybrids, including plug-in hybrids, represent 56% of new car sales by 2032. And the final rule projects annual net benefits to society of $99 billion, avoiding 7.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions through 2055 and preventing up to 2,500 premature deaths in 2055 as well. So, of course, EVs are proven to be less of a negative impact on our environment than internal combustion engines over the lifespan of the vehicle. There are spikes in when the EV is manufactured and at its end of life that these emissions go up, but they are still cumulatively lower than an internal combustion engine vehicle. So beyond the environmental impact, it is also important to recognize the broader appeal of electric vehicles. And while EVs have unfortunately become politicized in the U.S., they offer a really fun driving experience and a pleasant driving experience for both car enthusiasts and just everyday folks alike, and they can really pretty seamlessly integrate into your everyday life for those who are just wanting an electric vehicle or a new car in their world. Once fully phased in, the EPA standards are reported to save the average American driver an estimated $6,000 in reduced fuel and maintenance costs over the life of the vehicle. So whether you're drawn to, you know, the instant torque or the silent acceleration or the convenience of charging at home, if you have it, EVs are 
reshaping our perception of transportation. But I probably don't need to tell you that if you're tuning into this podcast. Either way. So quoted in the New York Times, John Bozella, who is the president of the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, which represents 42 car companies that produce nearly all the new vehicles sold in the U.S., said in a statement that the new EPA rules were a stretch goal, but one that offered some flexibility. The future is electric, he said, but the rules are mindful of the importance of choice to drivers and their ability to preserve the right to choose the vehicle that's right for them. What about the cost to automakers? This is something that maybe you've asked yourself. If they have to produce EVs, how is this going to affect you at the end of the line? So the EPA estimates that these standards will increase the per vehicle technology costs for automakers by about $1,200 for light duty vehicles and $1,400 for medium duty vehicles over the six year average from model year 2027 to 2032. So the estimate represents a compliance cost to the industry, but it's not the same necessarily as the price that consumers pay when purchasing a new vehicle. And of course, we have to consider tax incentives as well, how the technology will change. Perhaps some components will become less expensive with the advancement of technology. And also automakers should, if they don't, already be planning to create more electric and electrified options for consumers. But it is something important to consider. A statement from the United Automobile Workers, which is the UAW, the union that I'm sure you heard a ton about. They were striking, they were asking for better conditions, and they were successful in a lot of that. But they commented on this as well. The EPA has made significant progress on its final greenhouse gas emissions rule for light duty vehicles, they said. By taking seriously the concerns of workers and communities, the EPA has come a long way to create more feasible emissions rules that protect workers building internal combustion engine vehicles while providing a path forward for automakers to implement the full range of automotive technologies to reduce emissions. Of course, it's important. It's not just who's driving them around on the roads, who's living near roads, just us everyday people, but there are people in these manufacturing facilities building these cars that also perhaps would like some cleaner air in their workplace. So let's address a common misconception. How do these regulations differ from outright bans on internal combustion engine vehicles? It's very different. Unlike bans, ice bands, as you know, you'll call them in states like California or in states that have adopted California's or similar to California's standards and other European countries, the EPA standards do not mandate the cessation of ice vehicle production. Instead, they set emission standards that automakers must meet but it gives them flexibility in how they achieve this compliance. So this approach prioritizes cleaner air while still allowing for a gradual transition to electric vehicles. And to me, that seems like something we should all be able to agree on. We're going this direction and automakers can have some flexibility because we have seen how difficult it can be to go electric uh, in terms of your offerings and really be successful in that way. So they should be able to achieve it and also have a little bit of flexibility, which has been Uh, proposed, or there's been so many proponents in the automotive industry saying, okay, we need more flexibility here if we're going to achieve this. Okay. Ice bands, compared to the rules that we're discussing today, look more like what we see not only in the U.S., but countrywide. You know, in the 1970s, for a quick history lesson, the state of California was granted a waiver under the Clean Air Act, which allowed them to establish air quality standards for vehicles that were more stringent than those we saw in other states because their air quality challenges were unique and intense. And the measure was a measure was approved by the California Air Resources Board in just two years ago, August of 2022, that requires all new cars, SUVs, and pickup trucks sold in the state to generate zero tailpipe emissions by 2035. So that's an iced ban. Of course, it is staged to get to that final stat of zero tailpipe emissions on cars on the road and sold by that year, but they're starting with 35% that year, they're building to 68% in 2030, and then finally 100% in 2035 of zero emission electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid EVs are also thrown in there, which I know sometimes people are like, well, that's not zero emissions, but, you know, I don't know the details, but it's, it's better than nothing. 
Should look into that, though. So on the topic of ice bands, countries like Norway and the UK, other countries in the UK, Portugal, they have set some ambitious goals. Some have pushed back in terms of phasing out traditional fossil fuel vehicles. So Norway has the goal to prohibit sales of all vehicles using fossil fuel sales by 2025. Meanwhile, the UK originally targeted a ban on internal combustion ve engine vehicles by 2030, but has since extended it to 2035 due to some pretty big industry pushback. So this is highlighting there's a global shift towards sustainable transportation, and obviously EVs play a pivotal role in achieving that vision, not just here in North America. In fact, there are many even more accelerated plans to electrify transportation and limit the emission of greenhouse gases around the globe across different governments and different nations. And Likely due to not only, of course, regulation and tax incentives, but there has been a clear rise in EV adoption. We can see the numbers. As reported by Cox Automotive, in just last year, 2023 alone, nearly 1.2 million electric vehicles were sold in the U.S. So that is indicating a steady market demand after a period of rapid growth. That's where the headlines come in to that EV sales aren't you know, happening, they're tapering off when in fact we saw rapid growth and now we're seeing steady growth. So just a little less dramatic, but there's still demand for electric vehicles. So they haven't started to decline sales, but um, they are maintaining that steady growth instead. So there you have it, folks, a pretty comprehensive overview of the new EPA regulations that are shaping the future of EV manufacturing. Of course, I'm sure you have some questions. Let me know what they are in the comments foster that discussion. I would love to know what y'all think. And again, while the rule does not mandate the sale of electric vehicles, it requires automakers to meet tough new emission limits across their entire product lines, but they have the freedom to do so in whatever approach they see best fit for their company. Of course, the regulation faces political opposition, including legal challenges from the fossil fuel companies and, you know, typically attorney generals with the Republican Party. So from cleaner air to a greater consumer choice, these standards do seem to mark a pretty pivotal moment in automotive history. We haven't really been here before. What do you think? Again, let me know in the comments. I think it's pretty cool. And I'm excited to see what automakers do in response. As always, thank you for tuning in to the Out of Spec podcast. Stay charged, stay informed, keep plugging in with us. I will catch you on the next episode. Of course, I have included all the links that were used to support today's research in the show notes. Be sure to check them out. There's always more to read. And again, let me know what is on your mind. Of course, if you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to subscribe or to follow whatever it is, to like the video, to share it with a friend so that you can be sure to stay up to date with more insights on the electrifying world of electric vehicles. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.